definitely not the starters. You're on the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome in to the First United Bank Studios, where we've got the end of the bench coming your way here from 9 till noon. Things are looking a little different around these parts. Welcome back, everybody. David Collier. David. What's up, Hacks? Just one dude clapping. The one guy me. clapping. Yeah, yeah, I I Lucas do. is clapping now. We had to delete all of the uh, drops, so that, that's what uh Oh, no, we happened. didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't. Never will we do that. How you doing? Just waiting for this drop. Right. Da, 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 we're off to what we've done table. there with choice, now you fire them right away because of accountability. That's what we're doing. What's up, man? Welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a while. I'm not going to do the uh, I haven't seen you in a year joke because I actually saw you yesterday at the USA. So. I did see you on the baseline. Yeah. Yeah. Shooting you, little hoops. I was about to say, how long can you sit uh, crisscross applesauce in one sitting? Oh, gosh. You know, I... I do some weird things with my game preparation. Mm-hmm. And it's because of lack of room or your dining room table being an art station, <laughs> not having an office. So picture this. I have two, it's it's bunk beds that have been separated that are now side by side in the front bedroom. I sit on the ground, put the computer up on the bed, and then put this huge, massive, like hard calendar. Mm -hmm. And then I put my paper over that. And so that's where I do my uncomfortable sitting like you do. Mm -hmm. But like, if I had to do it for real, there's no way. Yeah, it, it, It is amazing to think about some of the things that, you used to be able to do oh i know I, and i think of that when i'm sitting on the baseline these when days. you every yeah. time you get down you're like yeah. man this used to be so easy yeah right and i and like at, at halftime because that's where the players where i sit is where the players go to the locker room at halftime and i gotta do my darndest to get up as fast as possible and don't move quite as fast as i used to 40 yeah. plus year old guy shouldn't be sitting like that on the ground we're for, almost the same age right yeah i think i'm a little bit older than you no, just, just yeah a tick. just a hair um the thing that i always go to is I would spend months of my life behind home plate, just moving around, no issues, even though I was still a big kid. Yeah. Um, you know, I could just live back there in a in a catcher's position. Now, thirty seconds maybe. Mm-hmm. And it's over. I didn't have that problem in baseball. It was either standing in the outfield or most of the time sitting. How's Brooksy on the bench. doing? He's good. He's good. I got a te- another teenager in the house, about to lose one teenager, uh, numbers wise, and uh, just gained a teenager. Just turned thirteen last month, so he's doing good. Uh, getting ready for the uh, track track season coming up here in middle school. So looking forward to that. But yeah, good, sarcastic as always. Oh yeah, a little pain in the butt. Yeah, mine now. Every time he gets cut, he uh, breaks out into some sort of hives. <laughs> no lie, it's yeah. just the damnedest thing it's just driving me crazy he was at the game yesterday as well he was he was he was at a good seat so so what's going on here is it's me and collier from 9 to 12 for the foreseeable future or until you know i get fired which could happen at any second collier's not going to get fired because he's been on the air for six minutes uh oh, lucas is still with us here on the end of the bench schwa is coming up and kind of the Clint role, the previous Clint role, Clint uh, is going to the afternoons. So that's all you need to know. Um, we will have all of our regular bits. Uh, I'd love to hear some John Redcorn, please. we got to introduce David to this, to the uh, Big Mountain Fudge Cake. Gotta get money for the things I want to buy. Gotta get money so when the plane don't let me fly. Gotta get money, or else I'm gonna die. Anytime you're looking for a raise, you need to hit that. Or 
Uh, we're talking about uh, NIL deals, that sort of thing. We're going to hit that. Did you see that Breasts made a, an appearance on ESPN last night I, on the French Quarter? Yeah, I was working last night, and I did, uh, I, of course, as always, I saw the shot, but I wasn't looking for that. Uh, it's not what I typically <laughs> look for on local local <laughs> television broadcast or on the on a football broadcast, but of course, you you know, Twitter is your savior. You can go there, and everybody makes sure that you see it a second or third time. Uh, so yeah, that was a that was an oops. You got to be able to you got to be able to see that. I would think, especially uh, given given the location that camera shot was coming. How much from. time have you spent down there? I've never been there before. Oh my lord! Really? Yeah. Lucas, you ever spend any time down there? I spent a night. Yeah, down that's probably in New enough. Orleans. It's all you need, man. Yeah. It is um, always, you know, first, if, if you want me to talk about this place, uh, Bourbon Street. The way that I look at it is, it's like um, Vegas is called Sin City. Mm-hmm. It's named close. It does not approach the sin level of Bourbon Street. I've been to Vegas two, three times and had fun every single time. Maybe too much fun. A couple times, and I've heard stories from my friends that have gone to Bourbon Street. Didn't compare. Just exactly what you said. It's not even close. There's uh, you can feel you can feel the devil in the air much more on Bourbon Street than than Vegas. You just you just can because it's contained into one long street. It's like here's your kind of dome of evil, you know, and. Whatever you want to get into, you can get into. It's unbelievable how much um, how much that place just feels dirtier than, and it is dirtier too. Yeah. I mean, it's brutal. People puking in the alleys and stuff like that. So it's not it's me ever though. Sixth Street on crack is basically what it is. You know, I'm, it, you never been to Sixth Street. I I've been to Austin so many times, and I've spent time on Sixth Street like once. Yeah, and it was a long, long time ago. Like in my twenties, I it, it might not even compare, but that was that's you know given given the uh, the location, and it seems like that's the place to go in Austin. And obviously, there's probably more than just Bourbon Street, but uh, yeah. Oh, and on the chat line here, the humidity that would definitely be a difference as well compared to Las Vegas. It's so bad. Dude. Yeah. Um, first time I went, I'm going to condense this real fast. Um, went with a guy that I didn't know very well on a on an ORU baseball trip. We were playing Tulane. Right after Katrina, and I mean right after Katrina, go down there, get um, two hurricanes, some beers, start smoking cigarettes, go down and get a hand grenade, get another hand grenade, um, then start getting more beers. Then uh, he decides he can drive home. He runs into a car, a parked car. Uh, He's supposed to drive me back to Metairie which is a long ways from Bourbon Street. I say, go to your house so we don't die. He whips it into his uh, neighborhood, hits a parked car trying to parallel park, backs up, hits another car, goes forward, hits that car, uh, puts it in park, gets out, throws up all over his dash, (laughs) go into his apartment where you can still see the flood lines. Uh, He throws up in there and then uh, yeah, go to bed. And then I decided to throw up the next day. You held it in. I held it till the next day. <laughs> and then it gets even worse when I had to go do the game with ORU and Tulane. I won't even get to that story. It's just brutal. <laughs> uh, if you want to say hi to David, welcome him back. Do so at the Yates Flooring Center chat line. The Visual Edge IT hotline is 806-771-0973. We've got headlines coming up here next on 100.7 The Score. Definitely not the starters. You're on the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. It's time for the headlines here on 100.7 The Score, 100.7 The Score.com. All kinds of football going on while our basketball happened yesterday. Texas Tech easily getting past North Alabama and moving to 11 and 2. The Red Raiders will play Texas on Saturday. The Lady Raiders will play Texas tomorrow inside United Supermarkets Arena. Get there for that one. Big push to get you in the arena. Need you against the 10th ranked Longhorns. Football scores. 
You had uh, LSU beating Wisconsin 35-31. Tennessee beating Iowa 35-0. About right. Yeah. Wonder how many first I, downs Iowa had. I saw something, a uh, tweet that uh, it was an an hour or a hundred and sixty three minutes and twenty two seconds since the last touchdown scored by the Hawkeyes offense of clock time. Holy cow, that's amazing. Let's see, the quarterback throws for one hundred fifty one yards. They had a rush, a running back go for one hundred thirty three yards. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, that was on the Tennessee side. I was going to say that doesn't sound right. No. Iowa quarterback <laughs> goes for 56 yards. There you go. Running back goes for 51 yards. I was like, those are okay numbers. You can score some points with those. Uh, yeah. So Iowa gets a steamroll. They end the year at 10 and 4. College football playoff. It is Washington ending Texas season 37 31. Fairly late last night. Michigan beats Alabama 27-20 in overtime. Oregon, sorry, Lucas, you know, I had to bring it up. But you had some pretty spot-on analysis now that I think about it going back to last week. 45-6, to the Ducks over the Flames. What uh, what did you say you'd be happy if they had? If they had 14. Hmm. Yeah. So, I knew the Oregon's high-powered offense would just annihilate Liberty secondary because they've been getting annihilated even during the conference USA, but yeah. Yeah. A different kind of animal you're getting ready to tangle with there. <clears throat> and, um, so that goes down. Um, so you got Washington and Michigan in the national championship. Um, that's all I'm giving for headlines. Uh, well, we had some NBA, but I don't care. <laughs> Good, uh, I like to hear that. Well, Utah beat Dallas 127 to 90. There's your NBA talk of the day. What did you think of the playoff games? Yeah, they were great. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, more entertaining than I thought I had seen in a long time. And then last night, I'm like, man, it couldn't have been any closer than this in any of them since they started them in 2015 with this iteration, right? I'm like, there's no way, because what was uh, 13 total points the two were combined by? I look. It took me all of one year to figure it out. Last year's semifinals uh, decided by seven points. 51-45 to 45 TCU over Michigan, and Georgia kicked a game-winning field goal to win 42-41 to 41 over Ohio State to ring in the new year. So last year's games were actually closer than this year's games, but I think that they actually played defense this year in both of them. It, it made it that much more mm. interesting. It was definitely questionable... Uh, it was interesting, you know, for all the people that get mad at Coach Kidley for play calling, which is understandable at times. In crunch time, uh, look at the end of those two football games and some questionable play, questionable play calling, uh, especially in the Texas side. I, I think you uh, clock management, clock management. Uh, well, even the play, I'm not, I'm not a play caller. Trust me. But when you're taking on a Washington team that's one of the most penalized teams in the country, and you don't go after them. And that, those defensive backs, and try to throw to a guy that scored touchdowns in five straight uh, college football playoff games at the very end there, except for once, I think. I think I think you missed an opportunity to be playing for a national title if you're Texas, which that doesn't break my heart one bit. But uh, yeah, I, I thought both of them were interesting. I was obviously watching at the very end of the Texas game for you know obvious selfish reasons, just like you. Yeah. Um, and was elated with the ending, but I certainly did not think that was going to be the ending when, when they were down there with uh, four chances to score. Here's the whole difference when it comes to uh, what Texas ran into. And I'm sorry, I got some bad drainage going on right now. Um, it's uh, Michael Penix. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. You and, and Washington had obviously a lot of skill but it's a it's just a dude at the quarterback position that could lead them to scoring 37 points on what I think is a damn good defense for Texas. And I, you know, the reason that I picked Texas is is that defensive line. Mm -hmm. And I got to see them in person um, from the field. Got to see them warm up 
close over in Arlington. And, um, you know, it was the Big 12 championship and my son, uh, you know, is all geared up and fired up. And I tried to temper his expectations a little bit just after watching the Texas defensive line warm up. I was like, yeah, they're, hey, I wish he's got nobody that can stop those guys. Nobody. I thought that kind of defensive line would uh, play a bigger role. But again, now you see some of the differences between <laughs> Texas playing Oklahoma State and Backfoot Bowman and <laughs> Texas playing Washington and Michael Penix, who are undefeated. When he's got the ability to make plays with his feet, and he's not that of fast. An arm. That's the impressive thing. He's not fast with the knee injuries. He's actually slow. He's kind of like Pat. You know, Pat. Well, that's where I was fast going. Enough. He, Mahomes fast enough, right? Got to get to the corner. Got to get to the edge for a first down. Going to find an angle. Going to find mm-hmm. a way to do it. And that's what Penix does too. Yeah. No. He he has an uncanny ability to to avoid a rush or just find the right spot and give himself just enough time to throw the football. I'm, I maybe it's just because I'm left handed though. It, his does look good. But most of the time, when I see a left-handed quarterback throw the football, I'm not as ecstatic about it as most uh, righties out there. I have that too, but it's only in that position in sports that it drives me crazy a little bit. Yeah, I, th- I think that's what it is. It just it's weird, and that's because I like watching a left-handed batter swing. I think it looks a mm-hmm. lot of them look a lot better. But oh, left-handed golfers. Well, there's not that many of them, though. Wrong-handed golfers look really weird. They do look weird, but to me, it doesn't look weird at all, actually. I mean, obviously. But for whatever reason, I just don't like a left-handed quarterback throwing the football. 430 passing yards for Penix, and they go on to play Michigan. Now, on that game, you know, a lot of fun to watch, obviously. Alabama's got the lead. Michigan storms down the field, scores with about mm, 90 seconds left. Thought that might be too much time. Their defense rises to the occasion, and then they win it in overtime. That'd be kind of the way to describe that one. What did you think of the the last play call? I initially thought it was garbage, but then I listened. Well, it it, it looked like garbage. I mean, mm-hmm. because of the the bad snap and everything like that. But Matt Hasselback on Sports Center last night explained it perfectly. The guard was supposed to pull, and he did pull, and he was so fast that off the line. Yeah, off the line. That by the time. Uh, Milrow got the snap that was low for what? How, how many times in that game was there a bad snap that he couldn't get on that uh, guard's hip fast enough and it just blew it up. But if you looked at the play and the way they broke it down, if he gets the snap, he walks into the end zone on the left side. Mm-hmm. Just absolutely walks in. Yeah. Um, man, and, and maybe, you know, that late in the game, you're, you've been hitting each other like crazy for – an hour and a half, you're thinking he's not going to be that quick off the ball. Yeah. Maybe. And then, boom, there he goes off the ball, and there goes your season. Um, so, again, Washington and Michigan, who you got early on? Oh, that running back getting hurt at the end. Yeah. That that kind of hurts. I think uh, – It's going to be Michigan. I'm going to go with Michigan, unfortunately. I, I, don't, really, the, I don't really care either way. Yeah. Um, but I mean, obviously, the uh, the issues with sign stealing and whatnot will loom, and that's going to be fun to talk about for a week. Now, thankfully, there's not two weeks in between this because that's all we would have for two weeks, right? But yeah, Michigan's defensive line and offensive line seem like they're going to be. Uh, yeah, Harbaugh's got to just be sitting there laughing like crazy because they're getting weird. away with all this. They've gotten away with it. I mean, he just he he got suspended, and now he's back getting to enjoying the fruits of his labor and he's just got to be sitting there at these press conferences when they ask Saban about it and like inside uh in his mind he's just got to be laughing he's going to be Pete Carroll he's going to win the national title then he can leave nobody's going to be mad at him because he brought the national title back to Michigan and then he can go to the NFL and coach uh the Bears or the Chargers I think Lincoln Riley's going to coach the Chargers you got to get that Oklahoma in there real quick and his brisket making ability will hit the Chargers. <clears throat> I don't know. It's um, it's all all so interesting when it comes to this and this uh, the sign stealing. To me, it's not a it's not a big deal. They got caught. Every single person does it. Yes, but they took it to another level. We'll come up and check the calendar next. Hit us up with the Yates Flooring Center chat line here on the score. 
Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. It's a new look, end of the bench here on 100.7 The Score, 100.7 The Score. Dot com as we get David Collier back into the fray. He's not just pinch hitting, folks. He is in like Flynn. Lucas here as well. Uh, Lucas, we got anything we can play, David, that uh, he hasn't heard? I mean, we went with uh, John Redcorn. Is there anything else on your mind? There's no escape. The only hope is the sweet relief of death. That's my general uh, outlook on life. No. Right there. Uh, do you know what that's from? Uh, play, play it one more time. There's no escape. The only hope is the sweet relief from death. <laughs> I'm going to be mad whenever you tell me, but no, I don't. Super Mario Brothers. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, I wouldn't watch it's that with Kettle. Blue, yeah. blue star mm-hmm. that's yeah. in the cage. Okay. And he's yes, yes, a yeah. little loopy. Uh, yes. <laughs> The, the dark part, yes, yeah. very, very dark part. Yes, that would that would be a perfect. Uh, the penguin says, "Don't mind him; he's a little." <laughs> this is going to be the most positive uh, show in the world. I actually, I, I can be upbeat. I can be upbeat most of the time. Well, you're going to have to be. Oh yes, yes. I'm going to be. Don't call me Big Chief Rain Cloud <laughs> for nothing. Big Chief Thunderhead. I've got to tone myself down. Apparently, I I, I was told at some point that I was uh, I gotta I gotta get the quote here. Pausing. I I, I try I, I like to think I'm positive. I'm very I'm very cynical and I'm very sarcastic, and I don't know if that comes off very well on the radio. It, it seems like it would be a lot better. You could get the sarcasm on the radio more than at a text messages or a tweet. You can't you can't read sarcasm. Um, but I was I was I was shared this from the text line not long ago. The OU arrogance just pours out of its veins. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Which I don't I don't I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. But. I don't agree with that at all because I've seen and lived whatever that was to- about, and you're not it. Yeah. Well, I, and I've I've experienced it myself, and I've probably told this story on the radio before my first time around but i remember covering uh ou and tech in norman one year and i was standing in one of the end zones and i was standing too tall for the all five eight of me for the person behind me with their season tickets just heckling me like crazy go back to love and get out of here and i turned around i was like dude i graduated from here chill he was like i don't care get the heck out and i'm like okay whatever so um, I we got the down in front hard in uh, in the Bahamas. Really, it was terrible. Yeah, it was like we have to get up to put our equipment up to leave. Yeah, we will be out of your way in three minutes. Quit yelling at yeah. me. Yeah, chill. No, so I if I if I have the arrogance of a, a true OU fan, I apologize, but I I find that hard to believe considering the struggles that I had to endure during my. I'll put it this way: not that not we're not doing woe is me, and you can make fun of OU all you want. I I, I totally get it. But um, this year, every single time they did some kind of this is the first time since, like when they lost to Kansas. This is the first time since you could just insert when Collier was in college for every answer. Uh, six six turnovers in the uh, bowl loss. This is the first time since 1997 when they lost to Oklahoma State. Lynn Collier was in school, so I, I don't have room for the arrogance. I they they won eleven games while I was in college in football. So you know what's crazy is that that is a long time ago in the grand scheme. You think about you have seventy five years of life. How many years ago was that? Ninety seven. It was thirty years. Yeah, what twenty five? I don't, 25, know. I don't yeah. know. Long yeah. time. Yes. Nineteen ninety seven. That game. Was not on television. Was that in still? No, it that was, was in Norman. Norman. Yeah, I, I I'm trying to remember because I was yeah yeah 97. I remember. You know what I remember about that football game? Uh, the person that was working in the PA, working the sound system, played Toby Keith, which is understandable in Norman. Should have been a cowboy. That was playing. That's made me so mad. True low for I mean 
literally massive low for OU football as far as their history. No, it was, and that's what that's when I was in school. I was and their plan should have been a cowboy. Yeah, I was I was the John Blake era. So if I was if I have OU arrogance, I apologize. But I listened I'm to that it one up on the radio. Lost time, maybe I was there in '95. The one that you always love to reference about handing out the medals for yes, the yeah. graduating class mm-hmm. medallions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey. That was the first time in my life. I know, I know. Think about going from 78 to 1995 and never having it happen. No, it's, I mean, I get it. It's, that's crazy. I, I, I looked at that whenever, you know, whatever happened this year in Stillwater and just looking, I, I look back in amazement all the time. The, what tech, tech does against Kansas is ridiculous and it obviously doesn't span the history of OU and OSU, but utter dominate. I mean, and I'm not rubbing it. I'm just, it's amazing that it would be that lopsided. Just amazing. Congratulations on that win, by the way, though. You know how big that was. Oh, it was big for you. It was huge. No, did I, did you hear? I have the, uh, now we're going back to the medallions. You know, (laughs) I have the, uh, the panoramic, deals you know yeah. that you put in the frame uh-huh. you know picture i got one of those yeah. for christmas so i'll Good. frame that up and I'll, I'll come hang it in here for you yeah sweet <laughs> maybe maybe it yeah i'm not i'm not really living <laughs> here we go oh geez. so you can just put a big picture of a ref up there no i'm joking yeah joking i'm gonna get attacked on the no no line. i it means that I, I, i've said this before um when I was watching that play live, I was like, they just tackled Stoops. Uh, which, by the way, I love his game. I have so much respect for him because he just plays. Um, it's like they just they just tackled him. Oh, no flag. Cool. Cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, move on. No, it's I, – I totally get oh, it. Oh, because then, again, we, we can both go down this road so many different ways, but Garrett Limbrick did not hit – that's sooner on the sideline in 1988. Didn't even touch <laughs> yeah. him. Personal foul. We can go on and on with that. No, I'm not going to complain too oh, much. Jeez. Yeah, too much. not too much. Yeah. Um, who's going to do the pickums now? We will. Yeah. I guess the good thing about it is now it'll be competitive. There we go. Well, no, I'm just saying. I, when, I, when we did it before, choice was atrocious. If you thought choice was bad this year, I think I did two challenges the entire time. Or uh, what, are, what are they called? Sorry. Punishments. Punishments. I, yeah. call, I call it a challenge. I ate, I ate the spaghetti from... Uh, somebody actually asked me if I've been eating spaghetti from Elf. They did that on uh, the Today Show or something like that last week or Christmas week. I, yeah. I'll never do that again. You and Lucas have had to do... The food challenges. Blended McDonald's. Blended McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was. So that the sad thing is, I think I've only done it a couple times, and I don't even remember. Besides the uh, spaghetti thing, choice I could totally understand. Forgetting, did so many of them. Cheap shots at choice since he can't respond. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from one hundred point seven. The score. Giving you what you need to know here on this Tuesday, January the 2nd, 2024. Friendship, girls and boys basketball on the air tonight, 6 and 7.30 on Double T 97.3. Cooper girls and boys against Coronado on 100.7 the score, 6 o'clock and 7.30. Texas Tech men's basketball wipes out North Alabama yesterday. Warren Washington, a Season and career high, five dimes. As he dropped off the five assists, did a really good job of helping others. And Texas Tech made it really tough on the Lions. Red Raiders are 11-2. and two. They'll take on Texas this Saturday down at the Moody Center to open up Big 12 play. The Lady Raiders open up Big 12 play tomorrow inside the USA against the Texas Longhorns again. So we have uh, some action with the Longhorns coming up on the hardwood. And that will be a 6 o'clock ball in the air situation. 5.30 with Fink and Chuck on both 107.7 SFM 
and 100.7 the score. You have a national championship game consisting of Washington and Michigan. Michigan outlasts Alabama in overtime. And then last night, Texas couldn't get over the hump. Washington wins at 37-31. Afterwards, quite a few Washington players got in a verbal scuffle with Texas fans. I'm sure there was no alcohol involved there. And you got basketball coming up tonight. Some uh, ones to look out for. Baylor and Cornell. And that is at 7 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. The opening of Baylor's new arena. Colorado State, New Mexico. Duke and Syracuse. Illinois and Northwestern. And Pitt and North Carolina. All coming up tonight. And McVay says he's coming back in 24. Sean McVay makes a promise. And you think Harbaugh will be in the NFL next year, correct? Yes. With which one? Did you come to a conclusion? Uh, no, well, Lucas Lucas really wants him at the Chargers, which I can kind of understand. He's been pretty uh, solid everywhere he's been. I think the Bears uh, make sense, being a former quarterback there. I don't know if they'll cut loose uh, Eberflus that fast, but... What 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 what's keeping him at this point? You're gonna get the uh, first overall pick. You got right. They got the first overall pick for Carolina. After, they got it from uh, Carolina. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can start anew with a lot of different people there. I don't know. I I don't know what you do with Justin Fields, but that's a uh, another issue. I because if you got the number one pick, you better either take a quarterback or trade that thing and get everything you can for whoever really wants Caleb Williams. Harbaugh played two years with the Chargers. He was signed as the backup to It's a good good yeah. fun bust here. But oh, so that would be Ryan Leaf. <sighs> yep. Ryan Leaf. He was in Lubbock earlier this year. Played most of the ninety nine season after Leaf sustained a season ending injury in training camp. I'm trying to get to his results here. Not in the NFL. Dang it, I want the college results here. Because they were about to run him out of town in Ann Arbor for a while, right? Because he couldn't beat Ohio State. There you go. Okay, here we go. Took over in 2015. 10-3, 10-3, 8-5, 10-3, 9-4, 12-2, 13-1, and now playing for a national championship. Yeah, 14-0 playing for a national title. 85-25, 60-17, and that shows you, I mean... Now he he was terrible in bowls leading up to this last one. Lost orange, lost outback, lost peach, lost citrus, lost orange, lost fiesta. Not La Fiesta, which is a good Mexican restaurant <laughs> in Enid, Oklahoma, that used to be in a Brahms. If you see a converted Brahms, you're probably in a good spot for your Mexican food. He was pretty decent at Stanford as well. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Stanford. Michigan, Bears, Colts, Ravens, Chargers, Lions, Panthers. That's his playing career. Anyway, I don't know why I decided to break down Jim Harbaugh's entire life, (laughs) but it was interesting to me because I thought they wanted to get rid of him at one one point. And then again, I don't think you can have um, a Frank Solich type situation at Michigan. I just, but you would also have said the same thing about Nebraska. I don't you know, know. A lot was, of people say, "Hey, Brady Hoke, he was pretty bad at Michigan, wasn't he?" The guy before Harbaugh was he yeah. too before? I mean, he yeah, wasn't, he wasn't great. So it, it can happen anywhere, right? But I'm saying, if you were going to get rid of him, it would kind of feel Solich esque. Yeah, but it's not this. I mean, he's been. He was kind of like. Uh, it seems like he, what a, I want to say Mike Gundy instead of Mike Leach. He seems like he's flirted with uh, leaving quite a bit over the last few years, right? His name's always out there, and eventually you think maybe it's going to... A little flirty. Yeah, exactly, and that that becomes frustrating if you're a fan base. Now, if you're playing for a national title and you get the win and he leaves, like I said earlier, I think you're, you're still okay with it because I'm just amazed that this whole sign-stealing thing is just gone by the wayside not that i again everybody does it i get it and 
I think it'll change next year, hopefully, when everybody's wearing uh, headsets and they're just communicating that way like they did in every single bowl game besides these college football playoff games. But as much of a stink, I think it's probably the fact that they're playing so well without it, quote-unquote without it at this point. But they didn't look great right after that, and maybe it was just the pressure of dealing with the questions constantly and not playing better football teams maybe. But Well, the Big Ten's just not that good. Yeah, you say that. Two Big Ten teams playing for a national title. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Nebraska fans out there, <clears throat> Bullfighter, 9-4, and 12-1, and 10-2, and 11-2, Seven and seven and nine and three. You think you'd take some of those? Holiday, Fiesta, Alamo, Rose, Independence Bowl. Bullfighter's all in his feels, though, because he's got uh, Riola or whatever. That's Do- true. Dom- Domin- Dominic's uh, kid. His So this this guy's big sister plays Division One volleyball. At Nebraska, I'm assuming? No. Wow. But she's been in town twice. I can't. Rayola is her name. Yeah. Anyway, um, those were the results for Frank Solish. You know, Solish coached at Ohio for 17 mm-hmm. years. Yep. Got a buddy that used to work here 16 in town. 16 years. The season ticket holder for the Ohio Bobcats. So uh, he he brings that up quite a bit. He Big took Frank them guy. to 12 bowls. That little Caesars Bowl, very popular in the MAC. Mickey Tettleton's son uh, was a quarterback for Frank Solich's Ohio Bobcats. Your boy from Norman, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Mick was doing a ton of TV for OU baseball. Really? You don't remember that? Mm-mm. Yeah, it was just weird. Because when you go to do OU baseball, they throw you in a crimson shirt. Yeah. Oh, like, this is a crime. Yeah. When I was young, long before I knew the difference between the two, I loved Mickey Tettleton, and then I realized where he went to college, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can like him. If you're wondering who Mickey Tettleton is, he, he was the dude that laid the back straight back, oh, backwards. Yeah, great batting stance. Pointing towards the backstop, which I can barely do without a bat even. So You know what, You know who I would hope who knows Mickey Tettleton is? The guy across the glass over there. I bet he doesn't know who he is. Do you know Lucas. who Mickey Tellington is? What's your favorite baseball team? O's. The o- O's. Where did Mickey Tellington play most of his? O's. O's. I think he was an athletic as well, but he was. I I became a fan. Yeah, he had, the, you know, the A's had to have. Uh, they had regulations on forearm size, and Mick <laughs> yeah, would fit, have been perfect fit the in bill. There. Yeah. yeah. Old man talking sports. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. All right. So, not sure. Okay. Wait. I just need to do a better job of getting a starting point on the chat line. Next year's Big 12 basketball will be absolutely insane. That's right. Uh, hacks. I can't deal with choice anymore. You have to bring in someone else. Raymar brings in a sooner. <laughs> Uh, be careful what you ask for. Can't deal with this Woodman character anymore. Ah, you got to get somebody else. Here he comes from the Palace on the Prairie. Oh, yes. David Collier. Toby Rowland. Uh, uh, can we get some Red Raiders on the air? It's nice to hear the trailer park take. Ouch. <laughs> but sometimes we need civilized conversation. Just kidding. You two are the best. David's been missed on the air. Welcome back. That's from Team Money 806. Good to be back. Choice will be on at noon with Sneeder. Ayo Sneeder. What's up? What's that? That'll be coming up at uh, noon. Then they'll take you to three. Then uh, Clint Scott and Dr. Mike Gustafson will be on Tech Talk. You'll get it. We'll settle it in. More coming up. Don't forget to ask the bench warmers at 1145. Playing time is not required. This is the End of the Bench Podcast from 100.7 The Score. 100.7 The Score, 100.7 The Score.com. We just got a visit from Chuck Hines. I'm just popping in, say hello. The first United Bank Studios. You, uh, you know, you needed him today. I did. I'm, I'm leaning on Chuck Hines heavily, and I realized I don't have an iPad that I use at home, so struggling to get through this thing. 
but I appreciate it immensely. Get your questions to us at the 100.7 The Score mobile app and the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, Boy, there's quite a few here. Okay. Um, By the way, that was E-S-E-C-P-N. I've seen people call that on... uh, at that on Twitter, that feels fitting. Okay, gotcha. Bench warmers, how long can this marriage last? Can a Sooner and a Cowpoke survive together? Uh, I worked in the same sports office. We, oddly enough, we were talking about this a moment ago. Uh, Bailey Burmaster used to be my weekend sports anchor, and we lasted two years. Big we're, cowgirl. Yeah. We we're still on speaking terms. Talked to her the, the other day. Georgia. From the state of Georgia, working in Georgia, played soccer at OSU. So I think it can last. Bench warmers, did it warm your hearts as much as it did mine to see TU lose on their way out of the Big 12? It would have warmed my heart more if they would have lost before they got to the playoff. Um, but at least you don't have to worry about the hype machine rolling anymore. Yeah. It's been put to bed, and so I don't know about you, but I would have liked for them to exit it out a little bit earlier. But, yeah, it did. It did warm up. Well, if your Cowboys would have beat them, maybe. <laughs> hey, OSU was a bad team this year that won 10 games. I know. My well, Gundy's a wizard. He is a wizard. I'll give you that. Uh, yes, I was. I would have had no rooting interest and couldn't have cared less about that football game. At the very end of the game, I was watching intently because even though I have a couple of Longhorn friends that I would have been excited for to go watch them play at NRG Stadium, I was much more excited with the incomplete batted down pass to end the ball game and send them packing. I did not need, as, as somebody that has a, a, an alma mater going to the SEC with them, I did not need them playing for a national title slash possibly winning a national title going into the first year because the other school is going to need as much help as they can get going into that schedule they yeah, have I, next year. I understand all the things, even with what I said on my mean tweet. Oh, no, I, 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 I get it. I understand why it happened, why it's happening, and what's going on. But I'm telling you, sounds crazy. I wouldn't take my alma mater and trade places with yours with the way, with the direction that you're going. I would rather stay put in this new, newly constructed Big 12 that where the schools won't make as much money, yeah, not even close, might not have as good a chance of getting to the college football playoff, but give me my relationships, let's build some new ones, and let's stay with some stinking kind of familiarity. Uh, and and I would be just straight up intimidated to go in there and try to win football games, baseball games, not not as much basketball, yeah, but. Um, I feel like my chances of winning are better here. Oh, the chances of winning, no doubt, are better here. Um, I think the uncertainty that it caused in the the initial breaking of the news, I think you would agree the people in the Big 12 would have said completely different. You know, you would much rather be moving to the SEC. And who knows what these conferences are going to look like in two years anyway. Man, um, the way it's going with the talk of the super – division the you know going back and saying all right let's make it regional for everything that's not football i wish i i would love for it to be that way i would i would be fine with the big me big too. eight the big eight i would be fine with well, you I, know, i'm a big eight guy i know that's what i'm saying so wh- i think it would be yes 100 percent. it would be a moron if you were an ou grad or an ou fan to say that you're not going to be in a better situation in the big 12 because look at the success they had in the big 12 would it continue on maybe Probably, Probably to some extent, yeah. a lot more than it's going to in the SEC. The one thing that I will say, and I think it's going to be a tough road for OU, especially considering my issues with the coaching, <laughs> coaching yeah. staff, and wanting a different head coach in there, is that schedule next year. You're going to be lucky to win six games if it looks anything like what it did at times in the Big Twelve this well, year. That's, I mean, I, but I, at the same time. The newness is going to wear off, but looking at the games and the locations you're going, that is exciting. Yeah, that's much more exciting to me than Ames. Than, than Ames and sorry, still won't. um, well, that's that's an easy trip though. Going to 
Cincinnati. West Virginia. Doesn't excite me. West Virginia doesn't excite me. Go into Baton Rouge, go into Athens, go into Tuscaloosa, even though they play. The only one on that schedule that I couldn't give a rip about is uh, Columbia, Missouri, which they'll be playing next year and probably losing. Um, Benchwarmers predictions for Tech basketball conference record. I'm going straight up nine and nine, but I would lead lean. This might be a little stupid or crazy towards 10 and eight before I would lean towards eight and 10. I don't know why I can't say the word lean, but that's where I'm at. Nine and nine with a lean towards ten and eight. Yeah, I, I the easy thing is nine and nine, right? And I think that's where I will go just just because of some of the uncertainties. I just nine and nine puts you in as an eight or a nine, which we which, all know what that means. If you win, you get to play the one anyway. Hey, if you're in the tournament, I think you should be. You're high fiving like crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, bench warmers will Warren Washington ever have name changed on the radio to dub, uh, dub, dub or dubs for short dubs down to dubs. No, he will not. Yeah. God bless you, by the way, on the radio calls this it's year. It's been difficult. You got, I did a highlights last night of the Warren Washington block and Lamar Washington saved it out of bounds. And then I got back to, uh, the alley-oop to Warren and I, the way I had scripted it, I put Washington in there. I was like, I can't do it that way anymore. <laughs> what am I doing? Because <laughs> I could be a Lamar Washington. Uh, Ellie, you know, I would say Williams, I mean, I, Williams. I'd like for Damari and Williams to play more, but then that would make it even more difficult. But I'm telling you, this is a tongue twister season mm-hmm. um, with all the W's. W's There's just yeah. so many W's. By the way, that was a Big 12 play. Those plays win games. Mm-hmm. Shot block. Lamar punch forward, saved. Somebody got a picture of him. He was way in the air over the uh, out of bounds area, over the inline. Saves it back in. Extra pass, extra pass. Three pointer on the other side. Crowd goes bananas, even in a game that's already over. Those are winning plays. You know what else I thought was interesting from that second half? Also, winning plays to me to start that second half. I don't think they had a field goal until four minutes in. But their first seven points were from the free throw line, and I think nine of their first eleven were from the free throw line for the Red Raiders. They were able to get to the line and hit free throws, and I think they what they hit thirteen free throws in the second half, maybe something ridiculous like that. But if you can start off a half like that and just get all those points without having to see one go through the, this team can hit free throws. I mean, mm. at least now. Yeah, yeah, you're rolling up on eighty percent got to be one of the best in the country and i know i've and and by the way I, I teased this and it was stupid of me to tease it because we have asked the bench warmers right now which will fill a segment but it is worth tomorrow when we get here we'll go over some of those first conference game uh situations that i got to witness um for beard Adams and now McCaslin coming up. All of them have been on the road, or at least this next one will be, and the previous two were also. So we'll go over that tomorrow. I have some interesting stories from those games. And just when you're sitting there, what you're thinking and trying to project what your seasons might look like, what it all might look like. But we'll get into that tomorrow. Um, This is pretty funny. Is AD the red-haired bearded guy? And then somebody said after that, no, that's Chris Sneed. So uh, uh, that's pretty funny, I thought. Um, That was a joke. ESPN and their SEC bias is definitely not loving the All Big Ten final. Thank you. Yeah, that was because of Fox. Yeah. How many times will your team have to lose in those stadiums before you're tired of those experiences? So once. No, it's going to get old fast. That's what I said. But. To see the newness, it'll wear off if you start to lose all of them. But just to, just to, not that I'm going to be able to do it, but I would love to go experience SEC atmospheres. I know the SEC types think UT will not be allowed to be as obnoxious. They're full of themselves. They said they're going to come in obnoxious as they can be. That's from Jeff to wrap up the show. Thanks to David. 
Thanks to you out there. Thanks to Lucas. I'm Hacks. Bottom line, coming up next. This has been the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 107thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.